There was a bakery, and the bread was fantastic, because Ray the baker woke up super early and baked fresh bread. He practiced different recipes to find a great variety of tasty breads for his customers. Ray was also very kind to his customers, so they loved to come to his shop and buy bread. He worked very hard, and his customers rewarded him by buying his bread, thereby supporting his business. One day, Ray grew tired of waking up early, so he started using day-old bread. He was tired of baking complex breads with expensive ingredients, so he started making plain old white bread. And Ray was sick and tired of being nice all the time, so when customers came in, he was condescending and rude. The customers stopped buying Ray's bread, and he was facing bankruptcy. He was pissed off that his customers stopped buying his bread. He decided to force them to buy his bread. Ray went to their homes and threatened to beat them up if they didn't buy his bread. He was a black belt in beating people up. The customers were afraid, so they started buying the bread again. People complained about the crappy white bread and the crappy service. Sometimes we have a few bad apples in the bakery. If you people don't like the service or the bread, I'll allow you to vote for new employees. The customers felt empowered and voted out the lazy and rude employees. The new employees were more or less like the old employees. The customers often fought among themselves over which employees should work in the bakery. They were sure that if their favorite employees worked at the bakery, they would have good bread again. Meanwhile, they continued to buy Ray's crappy bread, and the bakery grew. One day, Ray was going over the books, and he noticed a decline in bread purchases. With the growth of the bakery, he didn't have enough time to ensure the customers were sufficiently intimidated into buying his bread. He hired some of his karate buddies to intimidate the growing customer base. His buddies also had black belts in beating people up. Ray instructed his buddies to intimidate only, but not to punch his customers. He was worried that if his buddies started punching his customers in the face, they might fight back. That would be bad for business. But he needed some way to ensure that customers purchased his bread. And to do that, he needed some punishment for them if they didn't. Ray had a great idea. He ran to his desk and pulled out a piece of his best stationery. There was a seal with the bakery logo on the top. It was even embossed in gold. Very official. He wrote in calligraphy that all customers had to buy five pounds of bread per month. If they didn't, they would be subject to fines and confinement of up to ten years. He framed the proclamation and placed it all over the bakery. He mailed copies to his customers. Sales increased a little, but most of the customers simply ignored it. He sent his karate buddies at the end of the month to collect from the customers that were behind on bread purchases. The greedy customers told them that they were sorry, but they didn't have the money. At one house, Ray's buddies said they saw some Panera bread in the kitchen. Ray fumed. His bank account was dwindling because he was paying his karate buddies in addition to the normal bakery staff. He knew words and empty threats wouldn't make his customers buy his bread, so he used the rest of his savings to hire a contractor to construct steel enclosures in his back parking lot. He sent the karate buddies back out with zip ties. He told them that anyone who was overdue had to pay double what was owed, plus interest and penalties. He said that if anyone refused to pay, they could handcuff them and bring them back to the enclosure. Ray said he would keep the cheap bastards in the enclosure until someone paid to get them out. The karate buddies brought a lot of customers to the enclosure. It became overcrowded, so Ray had to buy more enclosures. Also, almost all of his customers tried to cheat on how much bread they bought. Sometimes they doctored old receipts or simply lied on their monthly bread return. These cheap asses were stealing from Ray by not buying the five-pound monthly bread allotment. His proclamation was in calligraphy, and it was even embossed. It was very official. Ray was indignant that his customers still act like he didn't have the authority to force them to buy bread. Ray wasn't very good at math, and collections were getting complicated to keep up with. He added a back office to the bakery and called it the Bread Revenue Service, or BRS. He hired a few accountants to figure out which customers were paying and which ones were cheating. The karate buddies were jealous that the BRS had a cool acronym and an office. 
So Ray created the Bread Administration Department. The Karate Buddies were happy because they were now bad. The BRS figured out who wasn't paying and bad enforced the five pound rule to the letter. The money flowed in, but the new offices, the accountants, the Karate Buddies, not to mention all the jail cells were costing more than the bread revenue. It's expensive to make sure everyone's buying your bread. Ray raised his bread prices by 200% to pay for it all. The customers complained and voted some new employees in, but they still paid, and the bakery still functioned, along with the bureaucrats. One day, the customers got together and refused to buy any more bread. They were tired of being forced to spend their money on crappy bread. The customers rioted. The karate buddies took many customers to the enclosures and even had to kill a few especially unruly ones. The deaths inspired the customers to fight harder, and the karate buddies were beaten up. After they were beaten up by a mob of customers, one customer ripped their black belts off and burned them right in front of them. Ray went to his dojo and hired more karate buddies. He assigned them to bad and equipped them with throwing stars and nunchucks. It was a bloody battle, with many dead customers, but bad prevailed. The rabble-rousers were killed or placed in enclosures. The customers went back to buying the bread, and they paid the higher prices. But Ray was deeply concerned about the state of affairs. Things could have just as easily gone the other way. Ray wanted the customers to shut up and just buy the damned bread. Why did they have to be so angry all the time? I mean, it's not like he just took money from his customers. After all, the people did get bread. Ray thought that maybe it was an image problem, so he hired a public relations firm to teach people the benefits of bread. He also built a school to educate all the customers' children. His schools taught the children to be productive customers, and they taught them the virtue of the bakery and the importance of buying bread. This stuff was really expensive, so Ray borrowed money from a bank using his base of loyal customers as collateral. He thought about just raising the price of bread again, but after the insurrection, he didn't want the customers to get upset. The kids would be the ones paying the debt anyway. Year after year, decade after decade, Ray increased the size of his bakery. He hired more BRS agents and bad officers. He paid their pensions and health care. He built more jails and started the Bakery Takeover Unit, or BTU, to add other bakeries to Ray's growing empire. And to pay for it all, Ray simply borrowed more money and increased the price of bread just enough to maximize revenue, but not so much that he had another insurrection. Although the likelihood of insurrection was less and less because the old people who knew what life was like without the powerful bakery were dying off, and the young people that had been through bakery school understood the importance of supporting the bakery and continuing to buy bread. There was a bright young woman named Alice. Her mother didn't send her to bakery schools. She was taught at home. Alice learned the real truth about the bakery, and she hated it with all her heart. Alice's father was killed by throwing stars for writing a book that told the truth about the bakery. After killing her father, the Karate Buddies destroyed every copy of the book, every copy, except one. She cracked open the last tattered copy and read the book. She practically knew by heart. She needed to hear her father's words one last time before the big day. The big day arrived. Alice stood in front of the bakery with a massive mob of customers and her fiery hair blowing in the wind. We used to live in a world where we could buy any bread we wanted to, or choose not to buy any bread at all. The bakery schools teach us pro-bread propaganda and obedience. They teach us just enough to be productive so we can continue to buy bread. But they don't teach us the truth about the bakery. They don't teach us how the bakery steals our money and our freedom. They make us think that we need the bakery, but the truth is the bakery needs us. The mob of customers was getting louder. So loud, in fact, that Ray could hear them from his back office. Get bad and beat to you outside now. Disperse that damn crowd by any means necessary and kill that red-haired bitch. The officers and soldiers were armed and muscled, but the mob of customers was huge. There was 200 customers for each officer or soldier. 
The officers hurled their throwing stars into the crowd, thinking that after a few casualties, the customers would get scared and go home. But the crowd stood their ground. A soldier hit Alice over the head with a stale baguette. It was so stale that it was like a baseball bat. Alice was injured and bleeding from her head. The anger spread from person to person like an infection. The crowd was thinking and acting as one. They overpowered the officers and soldiers and spilled into the bakery. The bakery employees cowered in the corners. The mob stomped into the back offices that housed the BRS. The accountants cried and begged to be spared. One agent had an accident in his pants, which was a good strategy because nobody wanted to go near him. The mob found the oak door that was labeled Ray, the boss of everyone. They kicked the door in and found Ray hiding under his desk. Meanwhile, customers opened all the enclosures, releasing their friends and neighbors. With the extra space, they forced BAD, BTU, BRS, and the bakery employees inside. A handful of customers assisted Alice with her head wound. They applied a bandage and helped her to her feet. She was woozy, but she didn't want to miss this. They took her to the back office where Ray was being held. Are you ready to die? Wait a second. I can give you a really good job in the bakery. I'll make it worth your while. You can be my number two. Imagine the power, the power to force everyone to buy your bread. It's intoxicating. Never again.